his praise. Come on, let's give him praise. Every night and day. And with no delay, let endless praise resound. Oh, to you. Let endless praise resound. Every night and day. And with no delay, let endless praise resound. Oh, to you.
it today. We declare and shout the name of Jesus because of who you are, Lord. It's not based off of our circumstances, Lord. It's not based off of the kind of week we had or the things, the mountains that are standing right in front of us. But regardless of all those things, Jesus, Jesus, we call on your name. We call on your name, Jesus. Church, I don't know where you're at this morning. I don't know what you came in here with today, whether your load is heavy or your load is light this morning. I don't know, but I know and I believe in an almighty God who sees right where you're at. And today he doesn't just want you to come to another good church service but today he wants to meet with you the king of all the universe the king of kings who created you wants to meet with you this morning and he wants to minister to you and bless you and love you today and so I invite you to open up your heart as we spend a few more minutes in worship just open up your heart to the Lord today and just say God I'm here and I want your will to be done in me today through worship, through your word. Let your kingdom come in me, Jesus. We worship you in this place, God. We want you to receive all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, Jesus. We worship you, Father. Just focus in your heart and your mind this morning on him. Lord, we stop right now from the busyness of all that we do, God, all that we are, Lord, and we just rest in your presence right now in this moment, Jesus. Worthy is your name, Jesus. It's all about you, God. It's all about you.
Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. We're talking about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who came and took in all of our desires, all the things that come unto us. It is by his name we are saved. It is by his name we glorify the Father. In Jesus' name, praise you, God. We serve an almighty God. It tells us in, in Psalms. See, sometimes we've got to learn how to worship. David did that all for us. In Psalms, he said this, praise the Lord, my soul. And forget not all the, of his benefits. He heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. He saved you. And crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies all your desires with good things. But then it says this. So that your youth will be renewed like the eagles. See, so Like Tantra says, some of you may have came up here with something. Came in here. But God says this. I'll take it all from you. And I'll trade you my son. Jesus wants all of your sickness. He wants all the things that hold you back from praise in the name of the Lord. So, Father, we declare your name above all names. Jesus has come. He saw. He conquered. And today, we declare your name above all names. We glorify your name, Jesus. We bless you, God. We honor you, God. And we lift your name on high. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, friends, I love to worship with you. I enjoy this time that we can come together and praise his name. Before you seated, find somebody, high five them, give them a hug or a handshake and say, welcome. Praise God. Welcome, everyone, back to New Covenant Church. We are so glad you're here. My name is Pastor Gary. I'm the marriage and family pastor here at New Covenant Church. What a time of worship. What a time of praise. If you're new, we want to welcome you and say thank you for being here. We don't apologize when it comes to worship. We don't apologize when it comes to praise. We give God what's due unto him. Amen. Here's a great time for us to come together, but also a good time to give. For those who like to give, you can give cash. There's an envelope in the chair right in front of you. You can go online that we, excuse me, give.wearencc.com. However you give, we just want you to know one thing, that this is not a financial transaction. This is a spiritual transaction. As our ushers go ahead and come forward, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you that we can come before you to worship your name to glorify you we lift you up in our hearts and we bless your name so thank you for provision thank you for the wisdom and knowledge you've given us that we can produce wealth and father we give back to you a portion that's due unto you and we ask that you receive it and spread the name of jesus all across the world we all said amen Church, we are so glad you're with us today. If you are new, have a prayer request, need any information about one of our ministries, or just simply want to connect with a leader, fill out a connect card in the seat pocket in front of you. You can drop it in the box on your way out. Now here are the main things you need to know. Next Sunday at 11.15 a.m. at both campuses is the fourth step in our Next Step classes. If you are new to the church, the next step is a four-step process that happens on the first four Sundays of the month, and next week is all about discovering what it really means to be a leader and how you can strengthen your character and gifting to fulfill your leadership potential. Visit wearencc.com to find your next step today. Come join us for a night of laughter on Saturday, August 4th at 7 p.m. at the North Campus for a comedy date night with Richard and Sherry Bright. We will also finish off the night with an after party. Sign up online at marriage.wearencc.com. Join us the following day on Sunday, August 5th, as we welcome guest speakers Clayton and Ashley Hurst, marriage and family pastors at Lakewood Church and authors of the book, Hope for Your Marriage. Clayton and Ashley are longtime friends of us and former children's pastors right here at New Covenant Church.
Our monthly Winning in the Workforce meeting is Friday, July 20th at 12 p.m. at our North Campus. Our speaker this month will be Jim McKinley. Jim is a global sales and leadership trainer with a Fortune 500 company. Jim enjoys helping others succeed in all they do. For more information and to register with an optional lunch, visit winning.wearencc.com by Thursday at 12 p.m. In just a few short days, we're going to take a group of students and student leaders to the Gateway Student Conference at South Lake, Texas, and we are excited about it. This is going to be the industry-leading speakers, the best worship, incredible music. It's going to be a blast. But the best part about conference is what happens on the last night of conference at our takeaway time. That's where students get to open up about what God's shown them over the course of conference. And what we find is students come in with hurts and brokenness and wounds. And as a result, they find forgiveness and healing and hope. They really experience a life change. And that takeaway time is essential to that process. And that's what Covenant Students at Gateway Student Conference is offering. We just have a few more days left for you to register. So you can do that by texting 903-309-2825 or you can go to wearecov.com slash GSC to register. Do it now, just a few more days to register today. To stay up to date with these and other events, visit our website at wearencc.com or follow us on social media. Thank you for being with us today and have a great week. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you guys this morning. Good to be here on a Sunday morning refreshing in the house of God. Uh, if we don't know each other, my name is Stephen. I'm the executive pastor here at New Covenant Church. And before we get started, I want to look right into the camera and welcome our family over at the South Campus and everybody watching online. Can we give them a great big round of applause? We love you. We love you. You are our family. We are one church that happens to meet in two locations and through the miracle of technology. We can be with you guys this morning, and so there's many of you uh, that I miss seeing this morning, but I hope to see you guys soon. So wanted to welcome them in, and uh, we are in a series called uh, Summer at New Covenant, and so there's a bunch of different speakers that you've been hearing, and the last couple of weeks you've heard some of our own pastors. Two weeks ago you heard Pastor Jason, our next-gen pastor, and then last week Pastor Matthew, our growth track pastor. And I think they just did an incredible job. So can we give them a great big round of applause as well at both campuses? They're over at the South Campus today, so hopefully you guys hear that. I'm very proud of them. I'm very proud of our whole team, honestly, and, and uh, I don't say that in an a way of just trying to be prideful, but I, I'm really grateful for the team that we have, have here at New Covenant. I want you to know how much that they love you, that we care about you. We pray for you guys every week, and we're just here to serve you. It's the joy of our life to serve you, and I know that that's their heart too, and I always want to reiterate that to you so that you know how much you are cared for and how much that you are loved by our team. So very proud of all of them at both campuses today. Uh, and I wanted to make you aware of another speaker you're going to hear next week. Uh, Pastor Ron Corzine is coming next week. And many of you guys know Pastor Ron Corzine. He's a longtime friend of our church and our family. And he's spoken here before. And he's kind of known as the intentional encourager. And so he is going to encourage you. You're going to find that he is funny and refreshing. And uh, many of you already follow him. He says one of his biggest followings on social media is from East Texas. He has a lot of friends here and you guys. And so uh, he's always telling you guys happy birthday and stuff on social media. So, uh, but be here next week. He's going to be speaking. And then the following, well, August 5th, like you saw, we're excited to have uh, Pastor Clayton and Ashley come. I don't know if you guys remember them, but they were our children's pastor many years ago. And now they're at Lakewood as the marriage and family pastors, and they're going to be speaking here on Sunday morning. And even if you are not married, I promise you you're going to get something out of it. They bring a message of hope, and there's a lot of things that you can learn. So I want to encourage you to be here for that. But today, you get me. So, uh, yeah. No, I didn't. Thank you, Danny. I have a fan. Uh, thank you, Danny. Our worship pastor here at the North Campus, Danny, started that, so I appreciate him. I paid him. And... Uh, and hugs. He loves hugs. Danny loves some hugs. So if you ever see Danny, just give him a hug. He will appreciate that. But we are in the dead heat of summer. And uh, the, a couple weeks ago, uh, my wife and I, we had gone on a walk at 10 p.m. My, my parents had our kids and we were taking our dog out for a walk at 10 p.m. And I'm thinking, man, it is 90 something degrees at 10 p.m. in Texas. Has anybody else experienced that? It is hot. We were sweating walking one block 
at 10 o'clock at night, and something's wrong if it's that hot at 10 o'clock at night that you just want to, you got to come back and shower almost from walking down the street. And I thought, man, we are in the hottest part of the year. People posting pictures of their over 100 degree temperatures in their cars to show everybody else how hot Texas is. And it is hot. But I remember uh, that week after that happened, I was driving in my car and just talking to God in the car like I normally do, just have some conversation with him. And I just heard this weird phrase. I heard pool party in the desert. And I said, what does that even mean, God? Like that doesn't even make any sense because the desert is a hot place. It's not a place of refreshment. And a pool is a place of refreshment. And we go to the pool to get comfortable and to get refreshed. But a desert's not like that. So what does that even mean? mean and I begin to think you know the animals that live in the desert don't even want to be in the desert they don't find refreshment there and I pictured in my head I don't know if you guys have ever seen uh, the National Geographic or or Discovery Channel shows where there's this lizard that's walking in the desert and he takes his opposite legs and he puts them up like this and then he switches real fast they showed a heat map of what he's doing and his feet are getting so hot that he has to wait until the others cool and then he switches again because it's so hot, it's like going to burn him. He's not even, he can't be comfortable enough to stand on his own legs. And then he runs and he buries himself into the sand as deep as he can to find some sort of uh, refreshment in the desert. And I thought, man, even the animals don't want to be in the desert. How can there be refreshing in a desert? There's no pool party happening in a desert. And I'm trying to understand what this means. And then I began to think about how sometimes we can be in a desert, but be fooled into thinking that we're at a pool party. We can think we're close to a source of refreshment when we're really in a really dry place. And that's called a mirage. Did anybody know what a mirage is? A mirage is when you think you see water on the horizon like a pool or a lake, and so you begin to go after that refreshment, but it's not really there. It's playing tricks on your mind. It's playing tricks on your eyes. It's like the men in black. What you think you saw, you did not see. And so you're going after something that doesn't exist. And, and I began to think about how sometimes we can do that and we can become in a, a spiritually dry place. And I know on a hot day, when it's really hot outside and you're, you're thirsty, if somebody were to offer you iced tea or ice cold lemonade or maybe a LaCroix for you hipsters or, or maybe a cold Coke, and in the South, when you say a cold Coke, then the following question is, what kind of Coke, right? And then you guys say Dr. Pepper or Pepsi or something. In the north, they're like, what kind of soda pop do you want, you know? But we say Coke, and then you need to ask us what kind of Coke. That's nothing to do with what I'm talking about. (laughs) But I meet people in the north that don't understand that. So anyway, so if I offered you one of those things, or maybe milk, which is a bad choice on a hot day, by the way, (laughs) or water, what are you going to choose? A lot of people won't choose water, do they? They want something really cold and refreshing like a tea or a lemonade or a Coke. They think that's going to satisfy their thirst, but it never really does. We just get thirsty again, and we want more of whatever that was to try to satisfy our thirst. And I begin to think of how we do that uh, in our own lives sometimes. We can begin to go after things that we see in the distance that we think are gonna bring a refreshment, like our jobs, or, or money, or relationships, or hobbies, or vacations, none of which are bad things, but they're still gonna leave you thirsty afterwards. They're, they're temporary refreshment, and, and they're really a mirage of the refreshment. Yeah. And I thought about my uh, childhood growing up. Me and my sister used to watch this old cheesy movie called The Shakiest Gun in the West with Don Knotts. Anybody ever heard of that? Some of you are like, who's Don Knotts? He was uh, Barney Fife in, uh, in what, was the, what was the show? Mayberry. Mayberry. Mayberry, yeah. And so uh, Barney Fife was really goofy, but I remember there's a scene in this movie that me and my sister used to act out all the time. And I don't even know why we acted it out to this day, but we did. He's in the desert and he's, he's pulling a horse behind him and he's like, water, I need water. He's dry and he thinks he sees a pool of water ahead of him. So he runs and he jumps like an eagle, like he's about to land in this pool of water and it disappears and it's sand. He's like, oh, it's just a mirage. And he does this again. And then when I was thinking about that as I was praying over this, like, you know, sometimes we can do that. We can be led further and further into the desert after what we think is going to bring us refreshment. And it's just a mirage. And those things that I mentioned can just be mirages. And as humans, we need water. We're not meant to go a long time without water. After a few days, we can get into a really dangerous place. And I found the same thing to be spiritually for me. We're not meant to go 
without the refreshing water. And so after just a few days, I can become spiritually dry. I can find out that I, I, I'm starting to experience spiritual dehydration. But it's not, it doesn't happen like real loudly in my life. It's not like it, my body just yelling out, hey, you're spiritually dry. Like your body does when it's hungry, it starts growling at you, you know, you kind of get hangry, right? So your body tells you when it's wanting something. Your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions, they begin to tell you, they get louder when it needs something, but your spirit gets quieter. And if we're not careful, we can neglect our spirit, we can not understand that our spirit's not getting the refreshment that it needs, and we can begin to pursue refreshment in other places, and we become spiritually dry. So I wanna tell you some things here that if you may, be drift, you may be drifting into a spiritually dry place, you might identify with one of these if you're drifting into a spiritually dry place. You haven't experienced the presence of God in a while, or maybe you feel that God is distant, or you find yourself just wanting to zone out and, and escape the reality of life, or maybe you'd rather watch or listen to a podcast than actually go to church. You know, you're here today, so that's probably not any of you but we can become spiritually dry if we find ourselves seeking these things or not being excited about life, not being excited about purpose, and we can become spiritually dehydrated. So what I wanna do is I wanna give you two ways to avoid the mirage in dehydration. Two very basic, simple ways to avoid the mirage in dehydration. And since in the spirit of summer, we like to go on vacations to refresh, and there's nothing wrong with vacationing. People should go on vacations. I wanna encourage you to go on vacations. I know many people who are on vacations right now, but in that, in that same spirit, I wanna give you two things not to vacation from, okay? So if you're taking notes, the first thing to not vacation from is don't vacation from God. Seems obvious, right? Who would vacation from God? But I don't think we intentionally vacation from God. It's not like we're like, all right, God, I'll see you later, going on vacation, I'll talk to you in a long time from now. That's not what we do, but I know that when I go on vacation, it's really hard. I get out of my rhythm, I get out of, uh, things are different, and I can just slowly begin to quit spending time with God, and the next thing you know, I don't even know I'm not doing it. When I go on vacation with my wife's family, we roll like 25 or 30 deep on a vacation, and they don't like to stay in different places. They all wanna be in the same house, and so you gotta step over people at night to go to the bathroom or find yourself hiding in a bathtub just to get a little peace and quiet. <laughs> I've never really done that, but it has been tempting. Uh, we just went with them on a vacation somewhere and man, we were in a, it was raining outside, so 25 people in one house, very tight. Uh, so it was hard to find time with God. And if you're not careful, you can just drift. You can just find this slow, subtle drift away from spending time with God. And the next thing you know, your spirit's getting quieter and not louder telling you, you need this. It's getting quieter. So I wanna give you three ways to refresh with God. And these may sound very basic to you, but it's the building blocks of the way we refresh with God. And the first one is this, to refresh in prayer. It's the most foundational thing you can do with your relationship with God is to spend time with him. Acts 3.19 says, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come in the presence of the Lord. Refreshing comes in the presence of the Lord. And, and God gives you a promise in James 4. He says, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. So when you draw near to God in your time with him, he's going to refresh you. He will draw near to you and you will find the refreshment that you're needing. In Matthew 11, Jesus also said that I, uh, come to me and I will give you rest. So our rest and refreshment is found in our time with him and in our time in prayer. So we cannot take a vacation from prayer because we will find ourselves spiritually dehydrated, not even knowing it, because our spirit's gotten quiet. When I spend time in prayer, one of the first things I come to God, I start worshiping him in my prayer time, and I just say, God, refresh me, fill me today. I need your presence today. It's like breathing in real deep. <sighs> Life comes back into you. That's the refreshing time that should come in your prayer time. So don't take a vacation from God. You need to refresh in prayer. And the second one is to refresh in his word. The word of God is meant to be refreshing to us. Look at Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. It says, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth in bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. 
He's saying, listen, as the rain comes down from heaven and as snow comes down from heaven and it waters the ground and it makes things grow, so the word of God is. So my word is meant for you to replenish you, to refresh you, to help you grow. The Bible refers to the word of God as water, the washing of the water of the word. The word of God is meant to be our refreshment in your life. And I wanna challenge you if you're saying, well, I don't get refreshed when I read the word of God. Well, I would encourage you, don't read just to read a block of, of chapters in the Bible. I used to read to say, well, I'm, I'm gonna read four chapters a day, but I didn't get anything out of it. I really wasn't being refreshed by it. It became very academic. I was just trying to, to get through a checklist of reading the word of God. And, and the, the YouVersion Bible has all these great devotionals, but we can even get caught doing these YouVersion devotionals and get nothing out of them. We're just like, yep, oh, check that off. Let me post that to social media so people know I read the Bible today. We're all, we're all guilty of that possibly happening, okay? We could all get to that, but my point is, if you're not being refreshed in God's word, you need to slow down and just read one to two verses. Just begin to meditate on those two verses and say, God, refresh me with this. What does this mean? How do I see uh, my life in light of these scriptures? Don't move on. Don't just try to read a block. Get something out of it. Allow the word of God to refresh you because the word of God is living and it's powerful. And it will not return void in your life if you apply it to your life. So it's meant to be like rain coming down from heaven on you. So I want to encourage you. I'm not saying the YouVersion devotionals are bad. They're great. I do many of them. I do them with my friends. But I can find myself, if I'm not careful, tempted to just move through it to get it done instead of saying, what does this verse mean for me today, God? What does it mean for me? How do I apply this to my life today? And I find that I'm refreshed after that. It brings life to me. And what God put in me begins to grow. So I wanna encourage you to do that in, in, not, in not moving on, but refresh in his word. And then the third way to refresh is refresh in his house. Refresh in the house of God like we did this morning already. Psalm 63, one and two says, "O God, you are my God, earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and your glory. He's saying, listen, I, I, we're in a dry and weary land. And I, I'm telling you, we're in a dry and weary land spiritually. And he's saying, I, I'm thirsty for you. So where do I go? I go to the sanctuary. I look upon you in your sanctuary to behold your power and your glory. You should come to church on a Sunday morning and be refreshed by the power of God in worship. You should be refreshed by serving. You should be refreshed uh, by the word of God. And you should be refreshed by each other. I, don't, I get refreshed when I come be with you on Sunday. I, I look forward to this all week. It's like I know I'm gonna drink in and become refreshed for the week to come, coming on a Sunday morning. So David said, this is where it's found. When I'm dry and I'm weary, I know it's in the sanctuary of God. That's where I find my refreshment. So you're here today. I wanna commend you for that, but continue to push into the house of God. Find your refreshment there. And then the second way, the second thing not to vacation from is don't vacation from people. Don't vacation from people. Now, it's real tempting when we say, well, I want rest, I wanna get away, to pull away from people and think I can go be refreshed by, I need to go be refreshed by myself and get away from people. But what's happening is we're getting further and further away from the life source which God put in our life to refresh us. It's the mirage of something out there to refresh me. Who, who's in your life that can tell you that? That can say, hey, it's a mirage. What you're going after is not actually gonna bring refreshment. Who's in your life that can say that? I need people in my life that can say, hey, what you think is gonna bring you refreshment here is not really gonna bring you refreshment. You're going after a mirage. You see, because a mirage is a deception. It's what you think you see that's not really there. The thing about being deceived is, is you don't know it. If I knew I was deceived, I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be deception. I would know, right? So you need people in your life who can tell you, hey, what you're doing is not healthy. What you're doing is not gonna bring you life. Proverbs 18.1 says, a man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. We cannot refresh in isolation because nobody's there to tell us, hey, you're, where you're headed is a false refreshment. We're better together is not just a slogan. It's not just a phrase we have on t-shirts for our groups. We really, really believe that. We really believe our lives are meant to be better together with the body of Christ. We, that's why we have groups. We're in the middle of a group semester right now, and another one starting in September, our fall semester. I wanna encourage you guys, if you're not a, in a group, go get in a group. Many of you know you're supposed to start leading a group, and God's confirming that in you today. Yes, go and lead a group, and I promise you, you'll be refreshed in that process. 
So the first thing we need is we need to understand we need refreshment from others. We need to be refreshed by other people. The Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul, who wrote two thirds of the New Testament, who we think was the man, I mean, I can't wait to meet Paul in heaven because he was the man. But he needed to be refreshed by others. In fact, he said all throughout scripture that I long for your refreshing. And I'm only gonna give you a couple of, of passages here, but in Romans 15, 32, he said, so that by God's will, he's writing to the Roman church, I may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company. I know that I'll be refreshed in the company of other believers. This is what Paul's saying. We would think, well, Paul's so strong. He didn't need others. No, he's saying, listen, I need to be refreshed in the company of other believers. We see in uh, 2 Timothy 1.16, he says, the Lord grant mercy to the house of Onesiphorus. This is Paul speaking again. He's saying Mer- Onesiphorus needs mercy because his name is Onesiphorus. I'm kidding, that's a joke. If you need it, if your name was Onesiphorus, probably need to change your name. I'm um, just kidding. But he said, You're, uh, the Lord grant mercy to the house of Onesiphorus for he often refreshed me and he wasn't ashamed of my chains. See, Onesiphorus went to visit Paul in prison. He wrote letters to Paul in prison. He was encouraging him. He was refreshing him. And it, was, it meant such a big deal to Paul that he mentions him in scripture. That's the, you only hear of Onesiphorus a couple times in scripture and he's refreshing people. We need refreshment from other people. Believers, refreshing does not come in isolation. That's the mirage. Refreshing comes in the presence of God and in the presence of his people. That's where we find life. That's where we receive encouragement. That's where we receive prayer. That's where we receive love and community. It all comes in the presence of God's people. And I know you could say, well, I don't get refreshed by other people. I don't don't like a lot of people. And I'm not saying you gotta be around 500 people, except for today on Sunday morning. Um, You (laughs) almost got me there, didn't you? No, uh, My wife, she loves to be refreshed by lots of people. She recharges that way. I don't quite recharge that way, but I can tell you time after time after time when I've gone to spend time with people, I'm always refreshed afterward. I I can think of many lunches, many dinners, many meetings I've had with people. They've come over the house or I've gone to be with them and I was tired going into it, but I was refreshed coming out of it. We just talked about God. We talked about what God was doing in our lives. Just this last week, I ran into a friend I haven't seen in a while. And we spent about just 15 to 20 minutes together. And I'm telling you, I was, it was late at night. I was tired when I met up with them. But I was really refreshed afterwards. I can't explain that kind of refreshment. That only comes from the presence of God's people where you are refreshed in the company of others. And then we move to becoming a refresher to others. We need to know that we, can be re- we need to be refreshed by others But this is what I want you to understand is we need to be refreshers to others. That's a part of what God calls all of us to do is to be refreshers to others like Onesiphorus. Onesiphorus, Paul mentioned him in scripture because he went to visit him in prison and he wasn't ashamed of his chains. I cannot think of a better picture of the love of God through a believer than somebody who was not afraid of someone else's situation, who was not ashamed to be associated with Paul while he was in prison, but yet he continued to go and to refresh him. When we're not ashamed of someone else's situation and we're saying, I don't care where you are, I don't care what your circumstance is, I'm gonna come and bring refreshment to you, we are are showing them the highest level of of love from God that we can. And they are refreshed by that. I know yesterday, just yesterday, my whole day was thrown off. I had a plan and I was gonna pray a lot and get refreshed for today to bring this message and God just knocked the whole thing off. And I had from 6.45 a.m. to 11.30 last night, I was, God was just changing my plans, but he was changing them so I could become a refreshment to other people. I had a plan to get refreshed. That didn't happen, okay? <laughs> but I woke up this morning more refreshed than I would have been had I spent all that time in prayer. I woke up not tired this morning. I woke up feeling excited about what God wants to do uh, in my life and in your life. And I'm telling you, this is what happens when you begin to refresh others. In fact, there's a promise in scripture for that. Proverbs eleven twenty five 25 says, the generous will prosper and those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Those who water others will themselves be watered, the scripture says. I've seen people who are the most refreshed people on earth and they're always focused on giving out and refreshing others. It's the law of sowing and reaping. Whatever you sow, you're gonna reap. If you focus on refreshing others, you yourself will be refreshed. That's what the Bible says. That's a promise for you. And then I I began to think about Jesus who was the greatest uh, model of this and refreshing when he went in John 4 way out of his way to refresh this Samaritan woman at the well. 
I don't, I don't know if you guys know this story, but he went way out of his way to go to Samaria to meet this woman at the well who had traveled to this well to get water. And he goes up to her and he says, hey, can I have a drink of water? And she's like, you shouldn't even be talking to me. You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. And see, Jesus was on mission to bring refreshment to this woman. Let's pick it up here in John 4, chapter, chapter 4, verses 10. He said, Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God, who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself and his sons and his livestock. Now look at this. Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So he's coming to her. She's, he knows that she's thirsty. She traveled to this well to get water, but he knows that she's spiritually thirsty. Because he would go on to tell her, yeah, you have five husbands, you've had five husbands and the man you're with now is not even your husband. He, she's, she was thirsty and she was trying to fill uh, that need in her life with some refreshment of a relationship. And he's saying, you're gonna keep coming back to this well and you'll come back again and again and again for temporary satisfaction until you have the living water, until you're refreshed by the only thing that can really refresh you and that's me. Many of us do the same thing. We go to the same wells over and over and over again trying to find refreshment from them when it only comes from him. And Jesus then goes on to say, but if you drink of this living water, you become the well. There's water inside of you. There's living water that will bubble up inside of you, so to speak, that will well up to eternal life inside of you. And that is, that is the goal of the believers that we then become the well to give water to others. The, the living water inside of you is for others. See, she was confused about his source. She said, well, where are you gonna get this water? You don't even have anything to get water out with. See, Jesus was saying, no, no, listen, I, I have water for you you don't know about. You become the bucket of water with inside of you to give out to other people. Je Jesus would also say in John 7 that the Holy Spirit is living water flowing out of you. So you will always have water refreshment to give other people if you focus on refreshing them. You need to be the bucket that gives the water that God has put within you out to other people. That is the goal. The goal of the believer is to quit focusing on getting the refreshment to focusing on giving the refreshment. We become refreshers to other people in a dry and weary land. And I'm not saying to you tomorrow when you go to work to lean up against the water cooler and every time somebody comes up, be like, you can have this but you'll be back, but I have secret water for you. Now, I'm not saying you need to say that to them, okay? You might, I mean, it worked for Jesus, so it might work for you, but what I am saying is we need a shift in our focus to realize that the people you're coming in contact with, they need to be refreshed. They're looking for something to satisfy them. We're in a dry and weary land spiritually. There are people who are always looking to satisfy their needs somewhere else, and if we're not careful, we can begin to do the same thing. We can begin to, to look for that refreshment somewhere else. But we need to go from looking to get relief to looking to give refreshment. That's the goal. Now, even if you happen to find yourself in a desert, even if you happen to find yourself in a dry place, the Bible gives you promises of provision in the desert. Now, I just wanna read through some of these for you. In Isaiah 41, 18, he says, I will open rivers in desolate places, in fountains in the midst of valleys, and I will make the wilderness a pool of water. Isaiah 58, 11 says, and the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire in scorched places and give strength to your bones, and you will be like a watered garden, like a, spr uh, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. I love that because he's saying, listen, the God is gonna guide you even if you find yourself in a scorched place. You're gonna appear like a garden, like a well-watered garden. You're gonna be life coming out of you, and there's gonna be a spring available to you, not just for you, but for others. That's what he's saying here. And then in Psalms 107, 35, he says, he turns a wilderness into pools of water and dry land into water springs. And then in Psalm 84, five through seven, this is the last verse I wanna share with you. It says, blessed are those whose strength is in you 
and whose heart are on the highways to Zion. He's talking about God. Blessed are those whose strength is in God and whose heart is on the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. Let me explain to you what that scripture means. What he's saying is, is if your heart is set on God and you're finding your strength in God and you find him as your source, as you find yourself on your pilgrimage to Zion, this is, this is what the Jews used to do. They would go on their pilgrimage to Zion where the temple was, to the house of God. As you're on your journey to God, even though you go through the Valley of Baca, the Valley of Baca was known as the Valley of Weeping or the Valley of Sorrow, and it was a very dry place. He's saying even when you go through that place of weeping and sorrow, there will be water for you. In fact, he says they make it, you make it, a place of springs, and there's pools of water available to you, but not just to you, but for others. You become the pool party in the desert for people. Now I want you to see that you could be in a dry place and you are the source of refreshment to those around you. When you begin to change your focus and say, you know, it's not about me always getting refreshed, it's about me refreshing others. You're gonna find that springs will come out of you. You will be refreshed and those around you will be refreshed. That's the goal of the believer. We're on mission to bring refreshment to others. The Bible also says, like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a far land. When you bring God to other people, when you choose to try to refresh them, it's like cold water to their weary soul. It's refreshing, and you have that within you already. So today, I think it's kind of just been an interesting message for me if I'm just being honest to you because I felt like I heard this one thing that was almost a warning and then I felt like this other thing was encouragement to you at the end and I think we can all be in in a potential place of of having to make sure that our spirit is not drifting away from God and then we're making sure that that we are watering our spirit but then also we shift our focus to watering others so I don't know where where you find yourself today but what I want us to focus on is who can we refresh tomorrow who on your job who in your family Who in your neighborhood? Who are you gonna come across randomly? God's gonna mess your schedule up like he messed mine up yesterday. (laughs) At least I hope he does because there's opportunities for you to refresh people that you didn't even know, to bring life to them that you didn't even know about. But when you focus on refreshing, you you, can sometimes say, but God, if I give out, then I won't be refreshed. I need to go and refresh. That's what I was saying yesterday. (laughs) I need to go and refresh, but I found more refreshment in giving out. I found more refreshment in meeting others' needs. So who can you do that for? We need to shift our focus. We are buckets to be filled up and then poured out. And I want our church, I want us, you are the church, I want us to be known as a people who are focused on giving refreshment to other people. They say, you know, if you know somebody from that church, you are going to be refreshed. They are going to give you living water. That's my goal for you. And that's my prayer for you today. Can we stand together at both campuses? And when I felt like I was supposed to to bring this message, it was a few weeks back, okay? And then last week, we had a lot of rain. And I'm so thankful for that rain. But I asked God, Lord, are you sure I'm supposed to bring this message? It's raining, and a lot. We're not really in a desert. And I felt like he spoke to me, and I felt like he said this. He said, this rain has been a refreshing, a dry land and that your pools have been filled, and that now you are to go and focus on refreshing others, that it is a sign of refreshment to come, not only in your life, but through your life, that the water that we just experienced is just a taste, that God wants to refresh you even more, but the water is a reservoir inside of you to give out to others, and then if you will focus on that, His rain will always be on you. You will always feel the refreshing of God in your life. Can we pray together at both campuses? God, we thank you for your rain, Lord. We thank you even this last week how we experienced your rain, God, and I saw things that were dead come back to life just because of the rain. And I thank you for your rain on your people today, God, that this was a a spiritual refreshment for them, God. And I pray, Lord, that times of refreshing will come to them as they spend time with you, as they spend time in your word, God, as they spend time in your house, God, and with other believers, that we wouldn't give in to the mirage of another source of life, another, another, just another pool on the horizon we're gonna go after, God, but we would draw close to you. We would find our refreshment in you. And I pray today, God, that there would be pools in each side of every one of us, that 
others would come to find refreshment. Like animals gather around a pool in a desert to find water, God, that people will be coming to people here today and saying, where is your source of water? How do you have so much refreshment, God? I just pray an abundance of refreshment on everybody at the sound of my voice at the North and the South Campus and everybody watching online, God. I pray your blessing upon them today, God. We thank you for meeting us here. We thank you for your presence, God, that we can refresh others in a dry and weary land, God. We love you today and we want to bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, well, I want our prayer team to come. And, and if, listen, if you were here today and that was you and you were saying, you know what? I might be in that dangerous place. I might be at the place where I say, I, I just need someone to, to check on me, to help me. Come and get prayer. Find refreshment with these people today. But, the, but the, if that's not you today, just realize we could get to that place. We always need to be aware of our, of our spirit and refreshing of our spirit. But at the same time, when we focus on giving out, I, pro, I wanna promise you today, you will be refreshed. So go refresh people this week, okay? All right, if you need prayer for anything, our prayer team is here. Uh, Please don't leave with a prayer need. If not, we will see you next week with Ron Corzine. Come back, you don't wanna miss that. I love you guys so much. Have a great week. We will see you next Sunday.